I'm uh, station manager Dan Aykroyd. Uh, Jane, you ignorant slut. It's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. 3-605, 0 0.10, 0 0.20, 0 0.22, 0 0.24, 0 0.26, 0 0.50, 0 0.70, 0 0.80. It specifies clean shirt, short hair, tie, pressed trousers, sports jacket or suit, and leather shoes, preferably with a high shine on them. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Dan Aykroyd Podcast. I'm your host, Scott White. And what are we talking about this time? We are talking about, well, this might be a little off topic. Well, I wouldn't say off topic. This has to do with Dan Aykroyd. I am reviewing the Ghostbusters Volume 1, Issues 1 through 4, a comic book that came out in 2011. Dan Aykroyd did not write this comic book. However, the characters are the original characters from the movies, which Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis did create. Uh, so I think this falls under the umbrella of the Dan Aykroyd podcast. Trying to branch out, trying to get new things, and uh, I just came across this, and I wanted to talk about it. I read the comics. We're going to go from there. Most times when I do a Dan Aykroyd podcast, I go through the subject bit by bit from start to finish. This one I'm sort of going to give an overall view of the comics. It starts off, these are the actual characters from the movies. So we have Ray and Peter and Winston and Egon, Janine, and we even have Walter Peck. The comic starts off with Walter Peck. Walter Peck is back in is back into the uh, into the frame. This comic book takes place after Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. There's a couple of things from Ghostbusters 2 referenced in this comic. So in this universe of this comic, Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2 exist. This was before 2016, so the 2016 Ghostbusters does not exist. Thank God for that. The comic is about how Gozer is still trapped in our world. And it's still in the form of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in Ray's mind. The evil beings want to change the form of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man into something that is not so easily defeated. When and, and and the comic book actually answered a question for me, which I thought when I saw that movie back in 1984. All four of them are up there. Zool says, name, choose the form of the destructor. All of the other three claim that their minds were blank, and Ray is the only one who came up with the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And that is why it was the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. In this comic, it is told to us that Ray was already selected whatever was in Ray's mind would have been the destructor. It says that the other three Ghostbusters were, think, were, were thinking of, uh, of different things, and they all, it all could have been a destructor, but Ray was the chosen one. And that cleared that up for me, because in my mind, when I saw that movie back in 1984, in the theaters, I thought to myself, do you know how hard it is to blank your mind and have nothing in it? I was happy to get that answer from this comic. So, yes, all these years later, I finally got an answer to a question that was bothering me about the 1984 movie. They all had thoughts in their head, but Ray was the chosen one. So now we're introduced in this comic to a new demon. And, oh, I'm going to mess up this name. This, this demon's name was Indulness? Indulness. I-D-U-L-A-N-S. Indulness. And this being was created to capture Ray and get him to change his mind to create a new form for Gozer to take to destroy New York City. That is why he is on Earth. This demon has taken the form of a guy named Jim Silver who works for the Stay Puft Marshmallow Company. And he's in there and he's trying to, he's trying to kidnap Ray in human form which doesn't really work, so he basically just has to resort to his spirit form and kidnap Ray. Now, during the whole comic, Ray is having visions. He is reliving what happened to the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. 
The fact that this demon is here back in New York, it's affecting Ray's dreams. And Ray has a dream guide. He has a ghost dream guide. And we're going to go off on one of these. Tangent alert. Tangent alert. Tangent alert. Tangent alert. The ghost dream guide is Joliet Jake Blues. We are reuniting Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi in these comics. Because John Belushi, as Joliet Jake Blues, is Ray Stance ghost guide. And I think that is so cool. It's never addressed by name. He's never addressed by name. But you can tell he's dressed all in black. He's got the black hat. He's got the black sunglass. This is Joliet Jake Blues. It's one of these great reunions, kind of. Like when the, the Beatles had uh, Free as a Bird. They got all four of them back together. This is, to me, this is sort of like that. It was good, even though... The, they're cartoon characters. They're both fictional people. In my eye, in those moments, on those pages, when those two characters are on the page, it is Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi reunited. Dan Aykroyd is a firm believer in ghosts. We all know that. That's where the Ghostbusters came from in the first place. I think that Dan has had conversations with John in his real dreams, and just to see them put on the page, it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. If you're just a fan, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, if you're a fan of the Blues Brothers, I would just say pick up Ghostbusters Volume 1, 1 through 4. My only regret is that John Belushi, Joliet Jake Blues, is not in the comics all that much. He's only in three or four panels. He makes the most of his time in the comics, but I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more of him in this comic. I wanted to see him more helping Ray through his dreams, helping Ray conquer this conflict which is happening. Because while this is happening, Ray is kidnapped by indulness. Yeah, indulness. That can't be right. Dullness? Indulness? If anybody knows the proper way to pronounce that, I-D-U-L-N-A-S. I if anybody knows the proper way to pronounce that, please leave it in, in the comments. Leave me a voicemail. I, I just feel like I'm pronouncing it wrong, but in dullness. That's how it's spelled. That's how I'm pronouncing it. And now let's take a break with a word from one of our sponsors. <coughs> Mommy, I don't feel good. Oh, let me get some cough syrup. Hold on there, Mom. Before you give Junior that medicine, look at the label. Why, this cough syrup says it only has 45% Kentucky bourbon. That's right. Now read the label of Dr. Carmichael's Alabama Redwood Country Elixir. Wow! Dr. Carmichael's Alabama Redwood Country Elixir has 80% Kentucky bourbon. Wow, that's more. That's right, Mom. It's almost double the amount of bourbon than your medicine. So if you want your kids to get well twice as quick, use Dr. Carmichael's Alabama Redwood Country Elixir. They'll thank you. And it tastes great, too. <laughs> Dr. Carmichael's Alabama Redwood Country Elixir, now available in 40-ounce bottles. Dr. Carmichael, whose number one priority is family. And now back to the Dan Aykroyd Podcast. The activity in the New York State is, once again, the ghost activity is going up and up and up. Now, there's a couple of side stories in this four-issue comic. Well, the, co the comic is, it goes beyond four issues. I just read the first four issues because the first four issues was this contained story piggybacking off of Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. The other stories going ahead are, are original stories, uh, not based on just having the characters from the movies, but not based on any events from the movies. That's why I'm just reviewing these first four. They're based on events from the first two Ghostbusters movies. Walter Peck is back, and he is now in charge of the Ghostbusters. The Ghostbusters are now part of the government. They're under control of Walter Peck in the government. 
and it's brought up that Walter Peck does not like Peter Vinkman, and he says that he's going to treat the Ghostbusters fairly, but you can tell just by the way that he's drawn and the gleam in his eye, the way he is drawn, this is not going to happen. He is out to get the Ghostbusters for what they did to him. Well, what, not really what they did to him, for what happened to him. What happened to him was his own fault, but he blames the Ghostbusters. Walter Peck is back in the comic. We get a, another person who's back in the comic is Dana's kid. We don't see Dana. Dana Barrett is not in this comic, or not in these comics. Neither is, um, neither is Lewis Tully. Uh, for Lewis Tully, the Rick Moranis character, there is just a throwaway line. Whatever happened to that guy that was practicing law that Janine was dating? It was just a throwaway line to tell us that character is not going to be in this reincarnation of the Ghostbusters. Let's take this, another one. Tangent alert. Tangent alert. Tangent alert. Tangent alert. Rick Moranis, who played Lewis Tully in Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2, he retired mostly from show business when his wife got sick. He had to take care of his sick wife. His wife had cancer. And after she died, he stayed out of show business and he tended to uh, his children. And he never got back into the... There was a lot of Ghostbusters video games where the originals would voice... Even Bill Murray, they would voice their characters. He did not go back for that. I have a feeling that he, I don't know, I don't know really know how it works. I think maybe they respected him. He didn't want to be involved in any Ghostbusters projects after that, so they kept his character out of it. He is not in these comics. And a per another person who is not in these comics is Dana Barrett. I told you there's a throwaway line for Lewis Tully not being in this comic. Uh, Dana Barrett is kind of in this comic because we see her son. Her son from Ghostbusters 2. He's, grow he's uh, what, I don't know, 10 or 11 in this comic book. He comes in to the Ghostbusters firehouse and they ask where your mother is. He says that she's outside because if she comes in, she's going to punch Dr. Vinkman in the face. So that is obviously Dana Barrett not coming in to the firehouse. I think it's kind of cool that we had these characters move on in their personal lives. You know, usually when you're at a job, you're at a job for most of your life. But sometimes, a lot of times, relationships don't work out. And the relationship between Louis Tully and Janine didn't work out. And the second relationship between Peter Vinkman and Dana Barrett didn't work out. So they wouldn't be around. They wouldn't be in these comics. They wouldn't be at the firehouse. It gave it a touch. I know this sounds weird, but it gave it a touch of realism. I liked it. We weren't bogged down with any romantic subplots in these comics. We just got down to the action. And that's something I'm going to talk about right now. There was a lot of... Being a comic book, there was a lot of action in this movie, and that sort of didn't ring true. That sort of didn't follow the characters. As it's been brought up before, the characters in Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2 are basically these four schlubby men who are trying to start a business. And we see a, a lot more action shots in this comic book. Maybe that's the nature of the beast, it being a comic book. If there's too much written exposition, it can get kind of dry. Because we do have a lot of scientific know-how from Egon. We are told what is happening with all that. It's done through medieval books and stuff like that. The, the characters themselves, there was a lot of action-packed fighting in this in these comics, which it really isn't the Ghostbusters. I mean, it's not like the Ghostbusters were cowards, but the Ghostbusters certainly weren't action stars. They needed their equipment 
to do most of the work now i will say on the other hand they have improved on the equipment they have made more equipment for the ghostbusters which i think is the way the ghostbusters would have gone they would have perfected their equipment they would have improved their equipment for ghost busting and capturing ghosts which they do in these comics i like that part I also feel that is if they would improve, improve, improve their equipment, they wouldn't be as gung-ho. Because even Peter Vinkman in this comic books are gung-ho, and he was never very a gung-ho character. He did work when he had to. He captured ghosts when he had to. But he did as little as he had to up to the point where he had to do work. In these comics, he's more of an out there go-getter so that really doesn't flush with the with the peter vinkman character the other characters in this comic book the winston zeddemore ray stance egon they all pretty much capture the character from the movies uh the character of ray stance he could have been a little more stiff in the comic he was a little more stiff in the movie He's a little more lackadaisical in the comic. Uh, not to a huge degree, but just enough where you could say, well, you know, they sort of wackied him up for the comic. What they did was they wackied up Ray and they heroized. Heroized? That's not even a word. Heroized. 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 Peter Vinkman turned him into an action star. And I'd like to picture Bill Murray as an action star. That would be fun to watch. These characters are based on the characters from the movies, as I said before, but they are not drawn like Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Ernie Hudson and uh, Harold Ramis. I feel that is a detriment to the comic. If this is going to be in continuation of the Ghostbusters and the Ghostbusters world, we want to see them look like the Ghostbusters in the Ghostbusters world. These were all, to me, a lot of generic faces. You knew it was Egon because of the hair and the glasses. I mean, you knew it was Winston because he was the black Ghostbuster. But Peter Vinkman and Ray Stance, they kind of look alike in this comic. If you're going to draw them differently, draw them way differently so you can tell each one from the other. But I would have liked to seen them capture the faces of the original stars in this. They look more like the people from the Ghostbusters cartoon, which was based on the Ghostbusters movie. And once again, in that cartoon, they did not look like the people from the movies and here in this comic did it not look like the people we know who they are we know who they're supposed to be make them look like that make them look like who they are make them look like who they're supposed to be i think that would have added a lot of nostalgia to this comic i think it would have made it better all in all oh a couple other subplots there's a couple of uh, guys in a bar they're wanting to uh, ease the Ghostbusters out of uh, ghost busting. They want to take it over themselves. I'm sure this is something. And this and the Walter Peck storyline is obviously going to be continued in the other. From the first four Ghostbuster comics, it was a really, really enjoyable read. It did capture the Ghostbusters essence. They may have tweaked it a little, but all in all, it was an enjoyable read. And the subplots, the one about Walter Peck and the one about these two guys trying to become the new Ghostbusters in town, I'm sure they will be continued throughout the comic book series. I bought the trade paperback, and it has uh, comics 1 through 12. I would recommend buying the trade paperback. That way you get it. you can keep reading past the first four. You can get original stories from the Ghostbusters if you're a comic book nerd if you're a Ghostbusters nerd if you're a anything nerd I would highly recommend these comics just from the first four as I said they were very very entertaining you got the gist of the characters mostly they got it right from the characters of the movie it felt like a continuation this felt like this could have been Ghostbusters 3 
these first four comics. This could have been a nice Ghostbusters 3. And I can't really grade, well, Dan Aykroyd's performance? Dan Aykroyd gave us the Ghostbusters, so that's the reason we've got this. So, hell yeah, Dan Aykroyd did a great job. He gave us the Ghostbusters. He gave us the Ghostbusters in these comics. And a bunch of other comics. Hats off to Dan Aykroyd and Hal Ramis for giving us these great, great characters that are living on through video games, through comic books, and uh, evidently a Ghostbusters 3 coming out. And that is it. This is a short Dan Aykroyd podcast because I didn't go through the comic piece by piece. I want you to pick up the comics themselves. I want you to enjoy the comic, reading it for the first time. It's a it's a great comic. Uh, I highly enjoy it. Go out, pick it up. If you want to support me here with the Dan Aykroyd podcast, go to my Patreon page, www.patreon.com backslash Scott White. You can also donate here on Anchor. And if you want to find out my tour dates, go to scottyblanco.com. That's my website. It has my tour dates for the end of this year and the beginning of next year. And uh, just check me out on Facebook when I'm not uh, suspended. And you can check out all the stuff that I'm doing there. I have a couple of pages. I do a four-square comic. And um, check out... Just check out all the stuff that I'm doing. And if you enjoy any of the stuff that I'm doing and you want to support me, even if it's just $1 a month, please do. And I will stay here and I will keep doing the Dan Aykroyd podcast. And that is it. We are done for this time. Short but sweet. Good night.